come oh Ramadan You are honored O oh, man the Quran It is Ramadan O oh, one who sleeps Stand up and declare The oneness of Allah The oneness of Allah Welcome O oh, Ramadan You are honored O oh, man of the Quran It is Ramadan Assalamu alaikum and a very warm welcome to the philosophy of fasting. Bismillah rahman rahim alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. All praise is due to Allah. Peace and blessings be upon Muhammad, his last prophet and messenger. As always, we have Dr. Atham al Dad joining us in the studio. Assalamu alaikum, Doctor. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for joining us in the studio Jazakallah again today. Khair. Barakallah. Well, Doctor, we're on a long journey together discovering, you know, basically the virtues of fasting. I want to take this time and opportunity today to talk about the virtues of fasting in Ramadan. Now, and the ethics behind, specifically, Ramadan, because this is the holy month. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. There are a number of virtues for fasting in particular uh, in Ramadan. However, if you may allow me to say that as we are talking about the philosophy of fasting, okay. this is our main concern in this program, or the wisdom, yes. the philosophy of Sharia in general. Um, the question that comes, why did Allah Jalla choose Ramadan? Of course. Okay. And as we are addressing uh, people uh, who might be living in non-Muslim societies, I would like to... Um, Focus on this point. Excellent. <coughs> in, in, in our materialistic life, we have to understand a materialistic reason behind anything. And this okay. is wrong. This is wrong. From an Islamic perspective, um, there is something called wisdom, mm. hikmah, and the wisdom is not necessarily to be a tangible materialistic. Of course. Okay? Think. It might be a tangible materialistic issue that we understand it might not be. The issue is we are commanded to follow Sharia even if we do not see the materialistic benefit out of Sharia. That's true. But we should have confidence that anything in Sharia is going to benefit us in the dunya and in the akhirah. I would like to make this clear for our brothers and sisters. Definitely. Anything in Sharia, anything you can think of, has benefits in the dunya and in the akhirah. Mm -hmm. There might be just very, very few things that might be related to Allah Jalla wa ala alone, and they might not be linked to the dunya. Mm -hmm. However, other than that, anything in Sharia, is not going to harm us in the dunya or is useless in the dunya. Of course. Anything in Sharia gives us so many benefits in the dunya. But the issue is we might not understand those benefits. D Dr. Hatham, that is so true. We're, we're, again, I'm using my own experience here. When I reverted to Islam, it didn't make sense to me. As you said, in a material world, we have to have a, a material logic mind thinking this is logical. When I reverted to Islam, it did not make sense. I accepted it because my art was for Allah, but I did not understand. But now it, it, it's becoming clear every single day. And this is a great point. So how do you think we can um, communicate this to the, the people in the West? That's why we need to understand more mm. about the philosophy of Sharia. Yes. See, we need to understand more about philosophy on Sharia based on Quran and Sunnah. Mm -hmm. Not based on uh, the, what, what some people wrongly interpret Quran and Sunnah. Yes. And we have to wear our own glasses as Muslims. Definitely. Not to wear the glasses of the 
non-Muslim Westerners, mm. because anyway, you are a Westerner, yes. but Muslim. So we are, when we refer to Westerners, yes. not necessarily non-Muslims. Not So we do not need to wear the glasses of non-Muslim Westerners and look at Sharia from those angles. This is very dangerous. Yes, I, I agree. And wrong. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, so many Muslims these days, whether in the West or in the, even in the East, as we say, because of globalization, exactly. are looking to Islam by or through the lenses of what non-Muslims. Exactly. And that's why they have a distorted understanding of the Islam. Not only this, they won't be able to pass the message of Islam to Westerners because if we are changing Islam to become a, uh, a non-Islamic or uh, to, to fit in a non-Islamic paradigm, mm. then Westerners, they will not see that this is something unique or this is something extra or yes. there is uh, something different in it. So why do they need to endorse it? Exactly. But if they see that this is a total, uh, a, a different paradigm that fits into our nature, is not alien to the nature of human beings, mm -hmm. then they will accept it. Sure. So, see, uh, we need to know that, as we just said, anything in Sharia is of benefit for us. But we might not understand the immediate benefit now. This is one thing. The main thing is we need to submit to what Allah decides. Exactly. And this submission, this submission gives the sweetness of Al-Iman. And Allah Jalla wa says in the Quran, وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ مَا كَانَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةِ Allah creates whatever He wants. And He chooses whatever He wants. In, and it is not up to them to choose. It is not up to them to select. Allah Jalla wa mentioned this. And Allah Jalla wa wants to tell uh, at that time, uh, the, the, the people said, why Quran was revealed to Muhammad? Why in particular Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What's different with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Of course, there are so many different things about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but they said this out of jealous. Yes, of course. From Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they uh -huh. do not want to submit. So they said, why Quran was revealed on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Allah jalla wa ala said, it is up to him to create whoever wants. And it is up to Allah Jalla wa ala to select. This is his creation. Yes. And he selects from his creation whatever he wants. Now, it is not arbitrary. It is not arbitrary. Mm. There is a wisdom, but that wisdom might not be visible to us. Exactly. So, why Allah Jalla wa ala selected Muhammad? Muhammad is the best of people. But however, Allah Jalla wa ala has the right to select anyone. And whenever Allah Jalla wa ala selects anyone, it is the best. Of course. Allah Jalla wa ala will never select something bad and he will say to the whole humanity, follow that mm. or do that or stick to that. Of course. It is the best. But we might not understand it now. Allah Jalla wa ala selected Mecca to be the holy place. Now Mecca, Mecca al mukarrama yes. is a hot country. Yes. It's not a green country. No. Agree? I totally agree with you, Doctor. It's very, very hot. Okay. So, why didn't Allah Jalla wa ala select a green country because in Europe? This is what he wanted. This we is never what know. He wanted. We never know. Exactly. We have to submit to it. Exactly. And not only this, we have to be confident that it is the best of us. Of course. It will not harm us. And we have to say that Allah has certain rights, has certain symbols. We have to do them to give those rights to Allah Jalla wa ala, even if we do not understand them. Mm. And they are called the sha'air, the symbols of Allah Jalla wa ala. Not only this, that, but we have to be confident that those rights are not going to harm us. So by going to Mecca, it is true that it is hot. We do not understand what's the reason of selecting Mecca, but the question is, is going to Mecca going to harm you or not? It will not harm no. you. Okay? Even if it is going to harm you, it will have a bigger benefit. Exactly. 
Allah Jalla wa Ala confirmed that He never created samawat uh, heavens and earth laibin, arbitrary for nothing, mm, for wisdom. So when Allah Jalla wa Ala selected the month of Ramadan, which is the ninth lunar year, uh, the, la the ninth lunar month. Okay. Why not the seventh? Exactly. Why not the third? Why not to have Ramadan moves? So if it is hot, then maybe uh, it is in the middle between uh, summer season of and course. winter season. In the middle, in the spring season. So uh -huh. it will not be difficult for people. Why? D because that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. It, it is an amazing uh, story here, um, Doctor. I want to pick up on, again, from our own experience, we have to have logic behind everything. And nobody can question Allah. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Exactly. And when, when you ask, why does Allah want me to fast in summer? Why is Allah... Only Allah, no, Allah only ever knows best. We don't know anything. We'll never know anything. لا يسألوا عما يفعل وهم يسألون. No one can question Allah. استغفر الله. Of course. And they will be questioned. Mm. But as I said, it was not arbitrary. Of course. And it has benefits. We totally. might know them. We might not know them. No. So this is the first point. That Ramadan is selected by Allah Jalla Ala. Exactly. This is the ninth month. And Allah Jalla wa Ala selected that month and Allah Jalla wa Ala made it special. SubhanAllah. Well, Doctor, we've pushed on time right now. We're just going to take a short break. However, before that, you're talking about the, the ninth month. Allah chose the ninth month and we're just saying that Allah, you know, chooses anything He wants. So it's amazing, Doctor. Exactly. Well, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We'll just take a quick break. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Welcome, O Ramadan. You are honored, O month of the Quran. Begin the lives again, for them happiness let us all bring. Ramadan, Ramadan, from reading the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in the Quran saying, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عرضها السماوات والأرض أعدت للمتقين Hasten to the forgiveness of your Lord and to paradise the width of which is the heavens and the earth prepared for the righteous and pious Brothers and sisters in Islam especially in the month of Ramadan the Prophet وسلم, tells us that when the first night of the month of Ramadan is here the devils are chained and a caller will call upon you O oh, seekers of goodness, come forth. Ya baghi al khayr, aqbil. Hasten to goodness is our show in Ramadan. Join me, Karim Abu Zaid, every night in the month of Ramadan and learn how can we hasten to goodness. And a sadaqa to the ones who are in great need Helping them to build their lives again For them happiness let us all bring Ramadan, Ramadan Welcome O Ramadan You are honored O month of the Quran Assalamu alaikum and a very warm welcome back to the philosophy of fasting. We're joined in the studio today with Dr. Hatem Alad. We're talking about the virtues of fasting in Ramadan. Doctor, before the break we were talking about the, the virtues of fasting in Ramadan, specifically the ninth month. Why did Allah choose us? We'll never know. But what is the, the virtues of fasting in Ramadan? Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. As we said that Allah jalla wa ala he creates whatever he wants. Of Allah Jalla Ala chooses what he, whatever he wants. Definitely. So Allah Jalla Ala chose in the month of Ramadan, and Allah Jalla Ala placed certain virtues in that month, mm -hmm. in this month of Ramadan that we are experiencing now. So, uh, uh, for example, uh, there is a, a very uh, amazing hadith, Hadith Wathila ibn al Asqa, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, the 
scriptures of Ibrahim were revealed in the first night of Ramadan. And the uh, scriptures of Musa or the Torah were revealed after six days of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. And the Injil was revealed in the uh, 14th night of Ramadan or on the 13th night of Ramadan. Okay. And the uh, Zabur was revealed after, third, uh, after 18th or after 18 nights of Ramadan mm -hmm. and the Quran was revealed after 24 nights of Ramadan. So all main scriptures mm -hmm. were revealed in Ramadan. Many people are unaware of this hadith. So the scripture of Ibrahim were revealed the scriptures of Ibrahim ha. were revealed in the first night of Ramadan. So it means that Allah Jalla wa Ala liked Ramadan from before. Exactly. Before Ramadan becomes what? Becomes a month that we fast. I don't want to get into the discussion where, you know, Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, fasting was prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon previous nations yes so previous nations used to fast of course the question is did they used to fast the month of ramadan or did they use to fast other months or um, other ways of fasting mm -hmm. it is not confirmed some people say they used to fast the month of ramadan some people say no they used to fast different kind of fasting yes but the point is Ramadan as a month, Allah Jalla wa Ala liked it the most. So that's why Allah Jalla wa Ala sent his main speech. All main books were revealed in Ramadan. So as we said, the scripture of Ibrahim mm -hmm. were revealed in the first night of Ramadan. Torah of Musa alayhi salam. And we believe in Torah. Of course. Was revealed after six days of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. The Injil was revealed after 13 uh, days of Ramadan. Uh -huh. uh, and then uh, the, the Zabur was revealed after 18 days or in the 18th uh. day of Ramadan. And the Quran, Fine. which is the best of speech, which is the best of books, mm -hmm. which is the seal of all books, as the Prophet Sallallahu is the seal of all prophets. Allah nazzala ahsan al-hadith kitaban mutashabihan mathani. Allah revealed the best of his speech, which is the Quran. Definitely. So the Quran was revealed during the month of Ramadan, uh -huh. which gives Ramadan a special what? A special significance. Of course. Because it is the time that what? That endorsed the revelation of Allah, the speech of Allah. The wahi of Allah Jalla wa Ala. Yes. And all of us know uh, there are inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. We have revealed this book in what? In laylat al qadr. Which is what? Which is the best of all nights throughout the year and which is located in the month of Ramadan. In Sirat al-Dukhan, Allah Jalla wa Ala says that فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ أَمْرًا مِنْ عِنْدَنَا which is what? The night of Ramadan as well. The night, sorry, the night of Qadr as well. Uh -huh. And of course, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن The month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed. So Allah Jalla wa Ala honored this month by revealing Quran in it. And Allah Jalla wa Ala likes this month the most the most and Allah Jalla wa Ala likes in particular the night of Qadr. So this is you can say the virtue of Ramadan as a month. Exactly. Which is the ninth lunar month. Of course. Now fasting during that month obviously will be something significant. And that's why fasting during that month is what is obligatory upon of all course. Muslims who reach the age of puberty and who meet certain conditions. SubhanAllah. That's why 
the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in an, in a hadith that is known for almost everyone, mm. and it is in a Sahih by Abi Hurairah رضي الله تعالى عنه uh. that من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه. Not only this, so the translation of this is the one who fasts Ramadan, the one who fasts the month of Ramadan, believing that this fasting is from Allah. Not only this, but seeking the reward of fasting, mm -hmm. he will have all his previous sins wiped out, mm -hmm. forgiven, subhanAllah. Doctor, you know, I just want to pick up on that point. You, you, you mentioned very sub, you know, great facts here on everything. Your words, you've chosen your words very specifically touching not only my heart but the, the viewers hearts as well you're saying uh, you know the Quran was sent down as the last book there's no there's no deviance between the Quran we can't say oh this is incorrect everything is self-explanatory and Allah has given us this time to reflect the month of Ramadan it, it's it's perfect and befitting and you know subhanAllah all praise is due to Allah Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah and see Whenever fasting is mentioned, Quran is mentioned. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم شهر فليصم. And this was mentioned in the middle of the discussion regarding what? Regarding Ramadan. Okay, that's why whenever we remember Ramadan, we need to talk about Quran. And inshallah, shortly we will be talking about Ramadan. Also, you remember the hadith when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that. Quran and fasting, both of them, what? Intercede yes. for the person at the day of resurrection. SubhanAllah. And anyway, inshallah, we will uh, come to that. But uh, let us uh, discuss the virtues of fasting exactly. in Ramadan in particular. Yes. So we said that the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala okay. anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, Believing that this is from Allah, either it is an obligation from Allah, and seeking the reward, then Allah Jalla will forgive all his previous sins. Imagine all previous sins, and then there is the the other part of the hadith, and the one who establishes Qiyam al-Layl during the month of Ramadan, he will have all his previous sins forgiven. And subhanAllah, look at the third virtue, yes. which is very similar to those. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and the, one who fa and the one who establishes Qiyam al-Layl, on Laylat al-Qadr only, on Laylat al-Qadr, mm. Allah Jalla wa Ala will forgive all his previous sins. So, if you miss the first chance, which is what? Not to be forgiven because of fasting Ramadan. Uh -huh. Don't miss the second chance. Which is what? Which is Qiyam layl during the whole month of Ramadan. Uh -huh. If you miss that chance, then are you going to miss the third chance? Definitely not. And that's why there is one amazing hadith. That the angel Jibreel mm -hmm. came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, Raghima anfu mri'in. Raghima anfu mri'in. Raghima anfu mri'in. Raghima anfu mri'in means... Be humiliated, uh -huh. be humiliated, be humiliated. And every time the Prophet ﷺ says, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Uh -huh. Then the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, what is this? Be humiliated and you say, Yes, Ameen. Just because of time, yes. the Prophet ﷺ said, Jibreel came to me and said to this, this, this. And the last one, uh, be humiliated for that person who lives during the month of Ramadan mm. and he does not have his sins forgiven. It means that this is a person who was not seeking the forgiveness of Allah Jalla wa Ala. You have all these opportunities and still you miss them. What does that mean? It means that you are, run, you are not running behind those many opportunities. Of course. So you are hum a humiliated person. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Doctor. That's all we have time for right now. Though, you know, I guess this journey today, we found out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving. Three opportunities he gives us. Subhanallah. And he, all praise to be to Allah. Amen. 
Until next time, I'll leave you in the safe care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, O Ramadan. You are honored, O month of the Quran. It is Ramadan. Welcome, O Ramadan. You are honored, O month of the Quran. It is Ramadan. O one who sleeps, stand up and declare the oneness of Allah. The oneness of Allah. Welcome, O Ramadan. You are honored, O month of the Quran.